Yeah, there were really two drivers behind the project. Uh, on the one hand, the towers were uh, approaching 50 years old and were in, in need of repair work to the actual brickwork structure and the concrete frame itself. Um, and at the same time, Peabody uh, had internal targets on reducing their overall sap emissions from all of their properties as a whole and uh, the vast majority of their properties are very hard to treat Victorian mansion blocks so this was seen as a win-win situation by overcladding they can accommodate the repairs that needed to be done and at the same time uh, improve the sap values quite significantly on the project. Tower blocks like this tend to be less problematical because uh, they had less features on the side, outside of the building so you can re easily recreate them in the EPS or wrap the EPS over the top as in the case of the roof to accommodate the thermal bridging. The weak points um, would be around the windows themselves but particularly around the balconies in this uh, situation because we had inset balconies. So we really had to ensure that the insulation carried over the parapet walls down the inside in fact and across the balcony terraces. And the knock-on effects of that were the need to introduce window linings internally to minimise disruption to the existing decorations. And uh, wherever there's a balcony, there's now a step up to get onto that balcony to uh, obviously accommodate the greater depth of insulation. The overcladding itself uh, uses a Stow insulated render system and it comprises a 200 millimeter expanded polystyrene uh, slab layer that is both mechanically and adhesively fixed to the existing fabric of the building. Uh, and then there is a, an acrylic render which is applied to the surface of that with a, a mesh to allow it to uh, bond to the EPS system. And the advantages of that are that it, uh, it's a jointless system so you don't see joints all over this building because it can accommodate the thermal movement. Um, uh, but it's quite lightweight so it's not adding tremendously to the uh, weight of the building and the foundations. And the 200 millimetres of EPS gives approximately a U-value of around 0.18, I think. So that's a significant enhancement from 2.1, which is the U-value that would have been previously. The windows are uh, supplied by Velfac. They are a double-glazed, low-E argon fill window system. The opening casement is in the same uh, alignment as the internal frame. They're a composite window, aluminium on the outside, timber on the inside. And what that means is you can still accommodate the overlap of insulation to reduce thermal bridging around the window reveals but without compromising on the size of the opening glazed area itself um, because of that overlap. And the fabric improvements to the solid areas and the windows themselves, together with an upgrade of the boiler systems, contributed an improvement in the sap rating from around 35, 36 to uh, low 80s, so it's a huge improvement just by fabric measures alone. Uh, there was such an impact on their heating bills during that first heating season, or the first quarter, um, that although they don't admit to it, the utility company sent out an uh, investigator to establish whether there was in fact any tampering going on with the metering or the supply system, because they had also noticed such a huge reduction, so it really does have an effect. Yeah, so we're in Newham, uh, near Canning Town, uh, and this is Ferrier Point, we're on the 22nd floor and about to have a look at um, ECD's next kind of tower block refurbishment underway. Well, let's have a look in a typical flat. So we're, we're facing east here and uh, we've got an equally impressive view the other way of the city mm -hmm. of London. Yeah. Um, but this, I mean, as you can see that there's a main road there, the A13 in from uh, Essex is one of the reasons why uh, London Borough of Newham wanted to make this a, a flagship redevelopment. Yeah. I have a building, a 60s building, it's 40 years old, it's, you know, it's getting tired, it needs repairs. Um, but with, with the overcladding works it can have another 40 years of life mm. and uh, there was an opportunity to make this a kind of flagship project because of uh, its prominence in this part of London and yeah. particularly within the Canning Town you know, regeneration area. Yeah. So um, the approach to that really is to, is to overclad the existing building literally with the existing fabric still in, in place. So uh, residents carried on their occupation as per normal with their windows on the inside whilst new windows were placed on the outside. So we're moving yeah. the thermal envelope outside. 
Um, and then it's not affected by weather and the opportunity to take the old windows out is, yeah. is you know, at the behest of the contractor rather than, than weather dependent. Um, it's a rain screen solution uh, incorporating 200 millimetres of uh, rock wall insulation on the outer face of the original concrete panels. The concrete panels themselves did have a certain amount of insulation value with a, a kind of wood wall slab type arrangement, but that's been enhanced with the rock wall. Uh, then there's a, a ventilation void and then uh, an aluminium uh, rain screen finish that goes on the outside to give that kind of uh, luminescent appearance of the building. So we're in the living room now and originally this would have led onto an external balcony um, which some residents would have liked for uh, purposes of growing plants or what have you but there's no doubt that this height is quite uh, disruptive in the wind. Um, to simplify the overcladding but also to extend the uh, living area of the flats. We've enclosed these in what are effect winter gardens. So you still have a high performance envelope on the inside face, but you have a second uh, envelope on the outside, which is where the insulation has been continued. Um, and that, that allows you to uh, utilize this space, however that might be, whether it's uh, as a, like a conservatory style space or if you're drying clothes, you can open up these windows to allow that moisture to um, disperse out of the building. So it just adds to the flexibility and at the same time simplifying and improving the thermal performance. Um, in conjunction with that, we've got these triple glazed windows installed. Um, partly to help combat the noise of the uh, traffic from the dual carriageway mm -hmm. down below, but obviously, obviously there's thermal uh, benefit to be gained from a triple glazed, um, thermally broken aluminium window in this case. It's quite, I suppose, a good example of how a lot of the kind of passive health methods in terms of overcladding and insulation and new windows give you an opportunity to do something else, say on the renewable side of things, or it, it, as well as a kind of creating a flagship for, for the area. So. Absolutely. Yeah, so now I'd like to talk about a project you've got on the boards um, called Petticoat Tower that it's really taking your experience and putting it all together and, and looking at achieving what's known as the inner fit standard, um, the passive house equivalent for a retrofit project. The refurbishment program um, ultimately is intended to incorporate uh, rain screen overcladding, replacement of windows improved air tightness and uh, retrofitting of mechanical ventilation with heat recovery. Um, working with PHPP, we have established that, that we, we can approach the NFIT standard relatively straightforwardly and uh, the form of the building as a tower block helps in that most flats only have two or at maximum three exposed sides. We use the PHPP um, software to uh, input the usual floor areas, the uh, U-values of the windows, the side values of the um, cold bridging around those windows. Um, we've based it on a Passive House certified heat recovery ventilation system uh, and we uh, clearly at this stage we're making assumptions that we can achieve the air tightness but mm -hmm. Um, it's an in-situ concrete tower block and quite often they have very good air tightness from the outset. So yes, I yeah. think we, uh, we, we've measured similar, chance, yeah. measured similar flats before and they're already at an air tightness of three. So with good attention to detail around the windows and around service risers, um, we're confident that we can uh, you know, approach the, the higher levels that Enerfit requires. Great. Right. Well, thank you very much.